Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today I'm taking a look at Dice Men, and I am so excited to actually show you guys this book. Um, this is a coffee table book, so it's big. It's bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I actually thought it was gonna be like, I don't know, like average hardback size when I picked this up. Um, and it's the origin story of Games Workshop as written by two of its three founders, Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson. Um, and it is amazing. It is in full hardback. I paid 55 bucks for this on Amazon. I didn't do the crowdfunds. I was too late for it by the time I'd realized it was happening. Uh, and so I had to wait for this to become available through major booksellers. But I was able to snag this from Amazon.ca. I'm sure you can get it from Amazon.com or your local bookseller or directly from their website uh, for Grabby Dice Men. I am so excited about this book uh, because this is the story uh, as it happened from 1975 in the founding of Games Workshop, and actually even before that, uh, when Ian and Steve meet each other, um, and and basically, it's it's the whole dirt, it's the whole skinny, um, and this is well. If you are interested in where your hobbies come from, what the origin stories are of things, and even just like a cool story about two friends who do something that they have no idea if it's going to succeed or not. And then it is like, wow, 40 years later, it's wildly far away from what you imagine. Um, it is a, a, I think an incredible read. Um, it's also an incredible read if you're a, uh, a fan of these two as authors, because there's tons of great background information uh, on fighting fantasy and their efforts through Penguin and Puffin, uh, basically changing the world of adventure books forever uh, and introducing RPGs as like a legitimate thing into, well, you can, you can see my history of this actually this week on Throwback Thursday. Jay and I sit down and talk about uh, the origins of that. So Dice Men, um, and this is in memory of Gary Gygax because they were friends with him and, and he is actually an integral part of this story. I don't want to spoil the entire story and tell it to you, but I do want to show you the sections of this book. All 18 of them, uh, starting at Gaming Ground Zero, which is their sort of like their introduction from board games like Warlord, uh, which they, be, they, they started calling Apocalypse, all the way to the Battle of the Boardroom and them eventually leaving Games Workshop. Uh, it has background information on the Owl and the Weasel and White Dwarf, their two publications, um, and tells not just the story in text, but in pictorial form too. And some of the stuff that's in here, that's what I'm really going to focus on today, showing you the book, is, is the relics that are shown off in here. Uh, like, <laughs> you've got Ian Livingstone's student union membership card. Like, they've, they've found some incredible pieces of history in here to show off. Uh, and there's Steve Jackson. <laughs> he was the president of the society, the University of Kiel's uh, Society of Games, and played a book called a game called Warlord. Look at that! Look at him, man. He looks like he's in the Beatles. I absolutely love. I love that he has this like mod uh, 1960s. I mean, it's when he was it was when he was in school. It, it works. Um, the Warlord was a self-published board game that they ended up finding when they were at university that led them to loving games like. It, like they, they were playing Monopoly and Risk before this. That was where board gaming was at. Uh, and Warlord was the first time that you had like an advanced sort of like combat-y, mechanic-y, you're fighting for Europe sort of thing, and they're obsessed with it. Uh, this is the original Games Workshop logo uh, in Robert Crumb style, with just the question mark games, uh, and clearly looking a little bit like a like a like a, a four day bender Mickey Mouse, which I think it's great. And then we have pictures of like the original like location where they had their flat, um, where you're mail ordering copies of Dungeons and Dragons that are first arriving in the UK, uh, and they have to run downstairs to the public payphone to take the call because they didn't have a phone line. And there's the three of them. Uh, this is Ian Livingstone. Uh, we have John Peake, who was actually, he was the craftsman. He, he's holding a man board there, but he basically made all of the like woodworking stuff in their flat that they were selling at the time. Uh, and then we've got Steve Jackson there on the right, looking cool as hell, looking like he's like, they like all three of these guys, they look like they're in a band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, there is, um, Steve helping John produce wooden games in the back. You can see he's literally just like in the flat making uh, like woodworking in the background. And there's their uh, little games workshop sort of like um, 
uh, I guess, like, uh, playbill. It's like a pamphlet talking about what they're making. They're making the Owl and the Weasel handmade games and fringe games. Some of their first orders. Uh, so just games uh, from... Um, uh, Lower James Street in London wanted to order six-man caliboards with pieces for six pounds each, six pounds fifty each, and they would like thirty-day credit terms. So they had thirty days to pay after the delivery, which is crazy. One of their T-shirts, and then the Owl and the Weasel, which is the original White Dwarf. This was their publication before White Dwarf, where um, Games Workshop is basically talking about. They're doing reviews. They're doing what I do, but they're doing it in 1975. So they're publishing this basically to talk about what's the cool new hot board game, what's the thing they're trying. And eventually they discover Dungeons and Dragons. And Dungeons and Dragons becomes their obsession. Um, they bump into it and end up like uh, actually being sent a copy by Gygax who, who discovers them at the same time as they discover him. And they're both just starting their company. It's out of his basement. And they secure the distribution rights for North America with an order of six copies of the original D&D &D box. Uh, and it blows up. And here's, uh, I think this is Ian's. Yeah, Ian's first dungeon for his first adventure that he ever writes and puts together. Uh, they, you know, they start publishing it in a catalog. And at this point, they're basically, they're like a Whalen Games or a Maelstrom Games. This is incredible. I'd never seen this until this book. This is the John Blanche cover for Dungeons and Dragons, the UK edition. So this is the UK box cover for when they had their own like special, their own like unique edition that was published in in the UK. Their character sheets, uh, and then Games Day, and they invent Games Day, uh, the first Games Day, seventy seven. Look at that freak show, <laughs> freak show. <up. laughs> like I can't get over the Harry Crumb weird ass. Uh, if you if you have one of these, so. Uh, um, this pin, I think, is incredible. But if you went to Adepticon last year, my friend Chris at Slow Death Games, he made an uh, Adepticon 2023 pin with this logo on it. Also, he made like the Grimdark sticker, which with John Blanche on it, he made some incredible stuff. If you've seen some memes on the internet with that stuff recently, with the old stuff in it, that was Chris. Uh, Chris is a hero for, for digging all this stuff up and making it. Um, and yeah, and like you've got like these pins. They collected all this like sort of um, classic sort of like material, uh, and then they they pack everything away. They go and meet Gary. They go to Lake Geneva. They take a two month holiday. Uh, and pack everything into a truck. They don't have their location anymore. All their stock goes into a truck and they get in a car and they use a car delivery service. They take a job basically driving a car to Los Angeles and then driving car, like basically what would happen is if you move, you didn't want to take your car and you wanted to fly. This delivery service would deliver your car from like New York City where the, their cousin, where their cousins lived all the way across country. And they look, and they go to Berkeley, they go to like, and they end up having dinner like sunburned and all like strung out from driving for like seven days uh, with Gary Gygax. And there's, there's Ian right there with Gary Gygax, uh, his face in the background, which I think is incredible at the Gargoyle re uh, restaurant. Um, and they go to, they go to the Lake Geneva convention. Uh, and they secure further rights, basically. Look at, look at Ian's, Ian's incredible. This is the founder of Games Workshop, man. Look at these two just driving around Las Vegas Strip. Um, and eventually they start their, their retail business. They discover that they could uh, invent packaging. There's the van they lived out before and Van Morrison, their van. Uh, they, they build their first retail location. Um, and I don't want to spoil too much more of it, but I did want you guys to get an idea of like the, the beautiful photography that's in here. They meet Brian Ansel, uh, who's working for Asgard Miniatures at the time uh, that he founded. There he is, there's Brian. Um, and he ends up uh, coming in in house to form like a subsidiary Citadel to do in house casting of miniatures with them and partnering up with them a little bit. Uh, that and then goes goes elsewhere in the the late eighties early nineties uh, after they. they put together Fighting Fantasy, but you can see some of the first boxes. I didn't, I have a copy of this. I didn't realize there's only 3,000 copies of this white box in existence, and I have one. I should take better care of it, because that's crazy. There's only 3,000 of them. Uh, their first plastic miniatures, which are for Fighting Fantasy, which I think is amazing, and they're actually 54 mil. They're like Inquisitor scale, and they're in these crazy weird clamshells that were shaped like a skull, which I think is incredible that the packaging was a skull. Now you can see here the same Barbarian painted up. They weren't great, they weren't super happy with them, but I think they're, for the time, they're fantastic. And you can see here some classic Citadel minis uh, all painted up in the color section. I gotta say, like the quality of this book is incredible. You can tell I'm excited about it. They go through some of their publications and the artists, first edition of Warhammer, the artists and like um, how important and sort of like, like seminal that was for them. And then their actual retail location. Uh, this is the first one right here. 
uh, where they're selling everything. They're selling D&D, <laughs> the, the uh, Commodore pet office computer, because they had a pet, which I think is great. Um, and then, yeah, and then more D&D, uh, White Dwarf, Judge Dredd, all their licensed stuff that they did, Warlock of Fartime Mountain, the Doctor Who game, Dungeon Quest and Fury of Dracula, it's more of their own in-house stuff. Um, and then as we go forward here, you can see like the Fiend Folio, which is featured in White Dwarf, AD&D. For Ian Livingston, from his friend Gary Gygax, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, special reference, the Monster Manual. I think that's incredible. Like all this signed stuff by Gary. Oh, that one's actually... For Ian Livingston, a pioneer of D&D in the mother country. Who signed that? I can't root. That's, I think it's Gary. Yeah, I think it is. it's Gary Gygax. Yeah, I signed it too. As he came over. Uh, and then we've got just more sort of like um, expansion and talking about the different locations, different logos and locations, video games, because they actually had a video game line too, which I think is incredible early on. Uh, and that actually, because Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson ended up doing some stuff in video games too, I think it's really interesting. The history of video games, Warriors in the Warehouse, uh, the shipping and all of the uh, the casting facilities and how Sunbeam Road went together to work hard, play hard, and playing, and playing music together, which I think is incredible. Oh, the flooded warehouse, the dreaded flood, the great leak. Uh, Gary Chalk arrives and there's like two feet of water in the warehouse. And everything's destroyed. Look at that. Look at how high it was. Oh my God. And then the Warlock of Fire Top Mountain and Fighting Fantasy, which I think is an incredibly important, and you've, ta you've heard me talk about it this week, part of the History of Games Workshop and how that leads to the Battle of the Boardroom and their eventual departure. Um, this is, yeah, this is an incredible piece of history right here. It's incredibly well researched. Um, they have references for everybody who was in here and then all the backers from the Kickstarter as well. What a book. Um, obviously, I have a personal connection to this uh, in that so much of like where I ended up in my life came from discovering the Warlock of Firetop Mountain in a public school library uh, when I was in grade three, I was eight. Um, and so this is like very personal to me. And if you had that experience, I think that no matter what the cost of this book was, this is an excellent trip down memory lane and a peek into the kind of like the minds and the hearts of the people that founded that company. I think it's very interesting, even from the point of view, of if you like watching content creation today, that comments on Games Workshop, that, that, that talks about their business practices or where they are now, that is you know, critical of like how they operate and what they do. I think on, this book is an incredibly important piece of context for you to own and read because it puts all of that stuff in perspective um, about where the company came from and how they survived and transformed into who they are now. And you can have your opinion about what that is. I think that's important that everyone makes up their own mind. But knowing this piece of history, that, that they are so far from where they were in 1975 and what they were at the beginning shows, I think, um, shows a lot about where they are today and what they've accomplished and I think puts in perspective who they are and what they've done. Uh, so yeah, thank you Ian and Steve for writing this book because I think this book is a really, a, a, a very polished piece of history. I'm so glad I own it. Um, and thanks to them for sharing all of the relics and history of, of what they did because I think it's, I think it's notable. They, they created two incredible franchises. They created Games Workshop and they created Fighting Fantasy um, and both those things have had lasting and I think enduring impact on the gaming scene in general. So there it is, uh, my GMG review of Dice Men, the origin story of Games Workshop, as written by the people that lived it. Big thanks for watching. Next time I'm Ash, at programming.